The Biden administration dodging questions on when consumers may see relief from the supply chain crisis. Fox Business's Edward Lawrence pressing Corinne Jean-Pierre about this yesterday. Watch. Um, the president signed the bipartisan infrastructure bill on uh, November 15th mm -hmm. last year. Um, we heard at that point that wait till next year uh, and then the slide, supply chains will start to work themselves out. Well, it's June, seven months later, yeah. and we're still waiting for supply chains to work themselves out. So what's happening? So um, let me just say that we're funding major new in initiatives on the docks and on dock rail systems, uh, the, the port of Long Beach to, to move goods more quickly. So we're making those investments right now. So we have have seen the investments are, are 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 out there and we have seen some improvements. Joining us now, Alba, Wheels Up President, International Importer and Exporter, Supply Chain Expert, Salvatore Style. Salvatore, thank you so much for that. What do you make of this non-answer? I'm sorry, you just cut out. Can you repeat? Uh, did you did you hear what uh, oh. Corinne Jean Pierre had to say yesterday? Did you hear? Yes, us play I did. That? Actually, what do you make of that response? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's uh, wishful and hopeful thinking, but uh, as I said in the past, I don't see this alleviating till at least the first quarter of 2023. Uh, there's still fragile supply chain issues, and although the port of LA may have uh, mm -hmm. reduced the number of vessels and dwell times of getting goods off the pier, that has shifted to New York. Now we have about in New York. 10-day uh, lag times, so you're seeing a shift from one port to the other. And keep in mind, we still have the peak season, which is coming about right now, where all the back-to-school and holiday goods are starting to be imported into the U.S., barring another black swan, I call it, the port of black swans in mm -hmm. China, where you never know one more issue that's going to raise its head and create another disruption. So I don't believe that uh, 2022 will see supply chain suppression. And then, Salvatore, you factor in, watch it, we're looking at oil. Oil prices are above $120 a barrel this morning. And it's really the price of diesel, which is at a new all-time high today, that factors into the inflation into goods because if you're, you're importing something on a ship, diesel is used in trains, trucks, ships, two-thirds of the farm economy and something coming into a port, it gets put on a truck to be delivered or a train that's fueled with diesel. And so how does that transfer continue to feed through to overall inflation? Well, it continues in a couple of ways. Well, it not only does it affect the airlines, vessels, and uh, trucking carriers, but it also impacts the products themselves that require um, petroleum and other energies to, to make the products. So my take on it is that the consumer ultimately will have to pick up some of those increases. And if they don't pick up the increases and some of these companies absorb the prices, you have to remember, a lot of companies have been absorbing the ocean freight rates, the China tariffs, not to the full extent for a good portion, and they can't continue to do that. So either they're going to make their own companies more fragile uh, financially, or they're going to have to pass it on. Uh, it's really a no-win situation. Francis, jump in here. Yeah, I'm just wondering how the inventory backup that some of the retailers are starting to report, like Target, how that really affects, they're going to have to discount some of that inventory after paying these extra costs with the supply chain issues. So how does that, how do you factor that into what's going to occur here? Well, a lot of the inventories, these prices were already built in, obviously, when they imported the goods. But a lot of these goods are not going to be the seasonal goods that are coming in, um, you know, and it's not going to impact when you're going to buy uh, your children back to school goods or holiday goods. These are going to be a new set of goods coming in that are needed. So I really don't think it's going to impact it much. The Biden administration, Salvatore, is considering relaxing U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods in a bid to ease the 40 or high inflation. You say the move could result in a zero sum gain, only benefiting Chinese factories. Can you explain more of that? Okay, so originally when these tariffs were put in place around 2018, a lot of the importers reached out to the Chinese manufacturers and asked for relief. Uh, some of these Chinese factories, uh, the predominantly them, gave relief. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, the retailers were 
not honoring um, increases because they already booked these orders from the importers that were coming in. So what I see happening is when the, if the cha tariffs are eliminated, the Chinese factories are now going to ask for increases. They're going to say they have their own qualms and additional costs. And a lot of these companies, because of the stratospheric freight rates over the last year uh, that they've been paying, really are going to need a lot of these tariff uh, savings for their own companies to either to either keep their employees in business uh, with them or just to survive. So I do not see these tariffs being passed on to the consumer. But I would like to mention mm -hmm. one other thing where I think everyone should focus on. Uh, the zero-sum game is going to be worse where we have something called in our industry and with customs the de minimis. And what the de minimis is, is for applicable goods that come into the United States direct to consumer that are under $800 per order, there is zero duty, zero Trump tariff. There is mm -hmm. nothing. There is a bill looking to repeal that law. So could you imagine now that, on the one hand, you're taking away the China tariffs, but on the other hand, you're also taking away $67 billion worth of consumer goods that are coming in, that now mm -hmm. the uh, consumer would have to pay an additional 7.5 to 25 percent right. additional duties. So therefore, you have just eliminated uh, what you were trying to attempt to do. Salvatore, thank you so much for that insight. Really, um, we're all shaking thank our you. heads, Salvatore style.